Uh, we're Brandon and Ashley of Treb Venture, and uh, we currently live in Corrales, New Mexico. We're parked on our land here. It's about an acre and a half. And uh, we have our converted school bus as well as our uh, storage container. We live here with our three kids where Ashley homeschools them. Yeah, we've been living full time on our bus for about two years yeah. now. It started with just a big trip up to the Pacific Northwest and down the coast for six months. And then when we got home, we decided to look for land here in Corrales because they don't have regulations on tiny house living and RV living, that sort of stuff. So this has become our home and we love it. So our bus is a 1999 Bluebird uh, TC2000. It's a diesel pusher with a Cummins engine. We get about six miles to the gallon when driving on the freeway. Um, we have 800 watts of solar on the roof and a battery bank of about 500 amp hours. So that allows us to be more or less off grid. Sands things like heating and cooling. We have a 100 gallon fresh water tank and a 45 gallon gray water tank. And we use a composting toilet. Uh, People, for some reason, are always obsessed with the bathroom and what we use. So we use a composting <laughs> toilet, and that's actually worked out really well for us. Would you guys like to come inside? So this is our home. We've lived here for two years with our family, which consists of three kids and us. Our oldest is 10, and our middle is 7, and our youngest is 4. Our four-year-old has basically never known anything but the bus. Um, it's her home. She misses it whenever we're away from it. Mm -hmm. Originally, we had built the bus just for travel. We wanted to take the kids all over the United States. Um, I homeschool the kids, and we wanted to just help them experience traveling and enjoying the United States really hands-on. And a lot of people ask us how we're able to travel and afford to do so. So actually, I run a software company. And so we've always been distributed, so uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to work from whenever, wherever. Uh, all I need is a laptop and an internet connection. So yeah, so let's start and just chat about some of the cool features of our bus. Um, we really liked the bus aesthetic and we wanted to preserve some of that. So you can kind of see the windows along the side, we left them open. While they're very terrible for uh, insulation, <laughs> they just pr provide some phenomenal light and uh, just really open up the space and uh, we really need all of the open space we can get. We, we store all of our kids' shoes, everything uh, down here. Uh, it kind of gets messy, but uh, keeps a lot of the dirt out of the rest of the bus. We have a TV mounted up here with an Apple TV connected to it, so uh, that helps out a lot while we're driving. Kids can watch movies, that sort of stuff and then, you know, family movie night. If you look down here, it's kind of the, the, the cockpit area. When I'm driving, we sort of, uh, we kept a lot of the original bus gauges, things like that, and actually some of them don't really work. However, we, we've put a lot of uh, interesting features in here. For example, the instrument panel. Uh, a bus typically has maybe 20 or 30 switches and knobs that do various things that are specifically related to school bus tasks. I've actually distilled that down to just about four things. All right, so this button here actually opens and closes the door. Uh, it's connected to the air control system. Um, this one controls the running lights, and then these ones control uh, both of the windshield wipers. Uh, other than that, we cut the wires and yanked everything else out. You know, some other typical things like a backup camera, and I have a CB radio here so that I can chat with uh, some of our traveling companions, truckers, you know, kind of get what's going on with traffic and cops, that sort of thing. I actually really enjoy driving the bus. I like getting up early, putting on my headphones and while everyone's still sleeping and just driving for hours by myself. There are a few tricky things about driving the bus. For example, it has no cruise control. So, uh, you know, I get a great leg workout on drive days. Air ride no longer works in the seat, so it's a little bit stiff. However, there's, there's nothing like driving just this big piece of machinery. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. So this is our living room. This is where we spend about 90% of our time when we're not sleeping, other than being outside. We built everything from the ground up. The couches are just a frame basically with plywood over them and then we painted them and had custom cushions built. We have storage in every possible place, the bus, starting with just the armrests. They open up, you can charge your devices under there. 
I keep like some of the homeschool curriculum when we're on the road in this one. We also have cup holders for drinks for when we're driving so that they don't get spilt. Also underneath each um, couch, it opens and you can see our messy stuff, but it's life. Um, we keep all of our like unused appliances, dishes that we're not using, but when we host, we need to have them um, under the couches. And under this side, we keep like books and board games, things like that, or camping chairs when we're on the road, those sort of things stay in here. So when we drive, typically the boys will sit here, Reagan will sit there, and I will sit there. We did install seat belts for the kids and myself, as you can see. The boys do not need car seats, but Reagan being four years old, she's still in a car seat, and so we do buckle her car seat in to the seat belts. The seat belts are bolted to the frame of the bus to ensure safety, just like a car. Typically when we eat dinner, two of us sit on each couch and then we built a bar right here for our youngest, just for extra seating during meal times. When it's cold outside and we are eating inside, we will get out TV trays for kind of a table. It's not super comfortable and I do miss having a dining room table, but it's functional and it works. So we get asked a lot about heating and cooling of our bus. So the primary way we cool the bus in the summertime is uh, we have two Dometic air conditioners, one in the front, one in the back. We require to be plugged into at least 30 amp to be able to use them. And they also have heat strips on them, but they don't work too well. So to supplement some of the heat, we actually purchased this uh, tiny wood stove. This thing has been a total lifesaver in the winter time. It is a four kilowatt stove, uh, about 12 by 12. And uh, we have sort of a wood storage down here. We really love the heat that the wood stove provides. It's sort of this kind of ambient, uh, really nice heat that the, the space heaters don't generally provide to you. One of the largest challenges, however, is uh, given its size, we have to split logs down very, very small. So it involves a lot of, you know, me chainsawing and then um, my young boys splitting a lot of the wood. Along with having a wood stove, you're kind of required to have a heat shield just so the bus doesn't catch on fire. I guess that's a thing. So rather than just having an ugly piece of metal, we found a really cool local shop that was able to uh, laser cut the metal for us. And so we had designed a logo a while back and we actually took the mountains out of the logo and sent them an Adobe Illustrator file and they were able to laser cut that into our heat shield, kind of giving it a neat aesthetic. Okay, so this is our kitchen. I knew I wanted a bigger amount of counter space. I know this is still small, but we're living tiny. We don't have an oven. We cook primarily on the stovetop or on our grill, which when we are on the road, we do have a grill that we bring with us. We have a 30 inch sink. It has dual bowls, one area for drying the dishes and one for washing them. This has been super helpful and we found a dish rack from Simply Human that fits perfectly in this spot that I love. When we first moved onto the bus, it was just a countertop. We had no wood backsplash back here, none of the shelf or this shelf. As we lived on it, we realized that if we had space up here, we would have more counter space when cooking. So we added on this small backsplash and then this shelf, which holds oil diffuser, my utensils and our coffee pot. And then as we lived on it even longer, we realized that we were keeping like fruit and things like that up here, things we needed to access quickly and realized that there's space up here. So we added another shelf that we typically keep all of our produce, vegetables and fruit up here. And then our coffee mugs that we use every single day, multiple times. So when designing our bus, one of the decisions we had to make was what sort of refrigerator do we want? Um, so the options were between an electric fridge and a propane sort of RV fridge. And while we like the idea of an, a propane RV fridge because it's a little more off grid, uh, they just generally weren't large enough for our needs. You know, we're a family of five. We ended up with an electric uh, apartment fridge which we're really, really happy with that decision. It actually still runs off of our battery bank, off of our solar. And so that's, that's plenty to power it. And now we have a lot more space for, for when we're on long journeys, that sort of stuff. 
So it's interesting it's going you know, to like Costco and things like that while we're on the road because we'll literally pull the shopping cart right up to our door and unload it directly into the fridge. So that's pretty convenient. One of the unique features about our bus is we actually have a few doors in it to kind of separate the living spaces. So the kids bunkhouse is back here and this is sort of our living room kitchen. So, you know, Ashley and I wanted to be able to hang out at night while after the kids were in bed, entertain, that sort of stuff. And so we installed this great door that and it actually swings both ways. We can go in this way and then back out the other way. And uh, sort of one unique feature of it as well is to keep it open, we actually use magnets behind the door. That way it keeps the path clear uh, when we're walking in and out. So this is our bunk area. Originally we had four bunks built. Our youngest sleeps here and she has a ladder built into our closet and climbs up. And then we have privacy doors. We call them for just comfort and so that they can feel like they have their own space. So when we moved into the bus, these were just open and we noticed that the kids really missed having their own space. So after about a year of living in the bus, we built privacy doors. I made them thirds so that when they're all the way open, you can get in and make the beds more easily. So you would just slide them out and then they can completely close themselves in and feel like they have their own room. Over here is my oldest, and he has the largest space, obviously, because he's the biggest. Um, he does hang out in his room a lot. He likes to read and draw and do those sort of things in there and not be bugged by his brother and sister. And up here is Jackson's bed, and he has a small ladder right there so that he can get in easily also. So originally, we had a bunk down here we hadn't thought about needing a pantry and about three or four months into living in the bus we realized we needed more food storage so we upgraded this area to have five drawers um, this is where we keep all like all spices canned goods popcorn chips those sort of things it's our pantry So when we did the pantry upgrade, we also added an area for a hamper for dirty clothes and a closet for our hanging clothes. Right here, we have a little bit of space for things that need to get hung like jackets, hoodies, sweaters, that sort of stuff. It also seconds as a ladder for Reagan to get into her bed. So now we are in the bathroom area of our bus, which is a shower and the toilet room. When we originally moved on to the bus, we had a very small, dark shower. It was built on the curve of the bus, so we often would make the joke that we were showering like Elf from the Christmas movie because you could barely get any water on yourself because it was on the curve. So after about a year of living on the bus, we upgraded it, um, lifted the shower 14 inches. We added the 14 inches just to add more height to the shower so that we could have the shower head above our heads. And visually, it made it so much more beautiful. We used subway tile and gray grout. Down below, we used a 31 inch standard shower pan and we built in a step for our kids to still have an area to play. So moving on to the toilet room, we chose to have a nature's head composting toilet. This allows us to be a little more off grid, so we're not reliant on dumping that sort of thing. We get about uh, two weeks of use on the toilet uh, until I have to actually change it. As you can see down at the bottom, we actually are diverting the liquids down to our gray tank. We originally had the, um, the attachment that came with the nature's head, but I kind of got tired of emptying it every single day, sometimes twice a day. Usually it was in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, so this, is, uh, this has been a great solution for us. You know, obviously we have a door for privacy, that sort of stuff, but uh, we live in a small space, so there's not really that much privacy. There is a motion sensor light in there. Um, we found that the kids in the middle of the night would often leave the lights on. So we installed this great motion sensor light so that while they're in there doing their business, the light was on, they leave. Within a few minutes, the light shuts itself off. So that was sort of a game changer. 
One of my least favorite things about the toilet is um, the kids wake me up pretty much every morning with the sound of ka-ching, ka-ching. That's uh, pretty much the, uh, the signature sound of the uh, flap of the toilet opening and closing. So this is our bedroom. We have a king size bed. We love one another, but we don't like to touch. So that was an essential when we built this bedroom. Um, we also have our entire family's wardrobe in these four drawers along with towels. We have pared down our wardrobe to almost nothing. The boys share this drawer. Reagan has half of that one, towels are on the other side, and Brandon and I have one drawer each. We also have a lot of typical storage up here, like our my blow dryer, hair accessories, that sort of stuff. Um, on this side, Brandon has a desk for when we are on the road. This is his standing desk and he will pull this out, put his computer up here and work comfortably and quietly away from the kids while we are traveling. We also keep all of our important papers, those sort of things in this drawer and medicines and miscellaneous stuff in the drawers over there. Underneath this bed, we have our fresh water storage so that it doesn't freeze um, during colder months. And we also keep all of our electrical components under here too, like our inverter, our charge controller, things like that. And our water heater is under here. When we originally moved on to the bus, we realized quickly that living in a tiny house with three kids gave us no privacy. So just like in the front, we installed a door to our bedroom and we also put a full length mirror on it so that I had an area to get ready and where the kids can see themselves and get ready also. In addition to our bus, we kind of have this outdoor space that we can expand into. So we have a, a little bit of a patio over there with some tables and chairs and stuff where we kind of hang out and visit with friends. Uh, we also have the picnic tables. So on nice evenings, we will often eat dinner, actually we'll eat any meal out there and uh, you know, spend some time together as a family. We put down some sod in the area so that uh, you know, we could play some soccer, baseball, that sort of thing. It's great to kind of have an outdoor carpet space that the kids can play on, uh, given that we don't have that inside of the bus. One other space that we can expand into is actually this storage container behind me. Uh, it is a typical eight by 20 shipping container. Uh, it's been uh, used one time to come from China to here and we actually purchased it from a local company here in town. My wife and I converted that into another space in which we uh, currently use it as a homeschool space, uh, living room sometimes, as well as I use it as my office when I'm working here at home. All right, welcome to our storage container. So we originally built this about three years ago when we lived in a home um, and it served primarily as my office. Uh, I run a software company, so I work from home and needed a space to work in. Um, now that we live tiny, it's sort of become more of a multi-purpose room. So as you can see behind me, uh, we still have the office. Uh, this is where I work most days when we're at home. Uh, has company logo up on the wall, that sort of thing. When I'm not working in here, uh, this space is used more as a homeschool space as well as sort of a living room space for the kids to play and expand into. Over here, uh, you can see Ashley keeps all of her homeschool curriculum, supplies, pens, papers. Up on the walls, we have calendars and uh, kind of to-dos for each day. The kids will actually sit here uh, at the table when they're doing their schoolwork. Um, and when they're not doing school work, we have video games and they'll play some Xbox or watch some movies in here while they're hanging out with their buddies. So we left the original doors on the shipping container so that we can open this space up to the outdoors. Uh, it's really nice when I'm sitting at my desk working and I want to have some fresh air or the kids are playing and running through here. Uh, these knobs here are actually for hanging a hammock. Um, I open the doors all the way and anchor it in and I'm able to put straps in between. So sometimes when I've had a long day and I just want to relax with a beer, string up the hammock and uh, chill out.
Hey guys, Alexis and Christian here with Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And click left or right for more tiny house stories and tours.